Hello there everybody and welcome to the video. I hope you guys are having a great day so far. Uh, in today's video we're going to be discussing how portals work in Total War Warhammer 3. Um, so we're going to jump straight in. The advisor will warn you a couple turns before the portals show up. He'll say something like Urson's roar is shattered across the continent or something like that. And then the portals would appear a couple of turns later. So what I've noticed is the portals, uh, they appear in the same place every time. Uh, and the corruption seems to be the same each time as well. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but I've, it's just what I've noticed over a couple times of playing. It doesn't really matter if the corruption changes anyway. Uh, so we've got purple corruption will be Slanesh, blue will be Sinch, green will be Nurgle, and a blue, uh, sorry, an orange slash red colour will be Corn. Um, so these portals will appear all over the map. Uh, they will start to appear in the same places, so you can get prepared for them. For example, I've got an army over here. There was a portal last turn that I removed that spawned there, and I've got a hero here that removes them there. Uh, so now we're going to obviously discuss what comes through the portal. Um, so if you leave them there for a while, you'll see you do get corruption, uh, and that will go up to pretty much 100 quite quickly with these portals. Uh, after a couple turns, you after two to three turns, you normally get an enemy hero come through the portal. So if we go over here, we've had a enemy hero, a cultist of Nurgle, come through. And you can also have armies will come through the portals as well, but that's normally after about three, four or more turns the armies will start to come through. Uh, so you ideally want to get most of these closed pretty quickly. Um, there's uh, two ways to close them. First of which is using a hero. Uh, so we've got an astromancer here. We can just bring him over to the portal. Make sure not to wound that guy instead. Uh, so bring any hero over. They don't need to have any special skills or anything like that. But what you do need to make sure is you do have 1500 in your treasury. Um, so what I do sometimes is just uh, spawn a couple heroes roughly where I know the portals are going to be. Uh, like when I get the warning from the advisor, I'll spawn in some extra heroes. Obviously you need to make sure you've got a lot of hero capacity too. Uh, but I'll spawn in some heroes, maybe recruit some smaller armies. Uh, in preparation for these portals because if you start to expand quite a lot like you can see here uh, as Miao Ying I've pushed out quite a bit not loads but there's the portals do appear everywhere this is what they look like on the map as well um, but yeah you just need to make sure you've got 1500 gold and a hero can shut the portal or if we come over here uh, we can send one of our armies directly to the portal and uh, an option will come up to close the rift. You don't pay any money, but you are going to have to face an enemy of that type of portal in battle. Uh, luckily, the, the they only send like medium armies. But for example, with Siege, when they have the uh, the shields, it can be a bit of a pain. But luckily, we've got a good enough army here to face this. So we'll just auto resolve this one quickly. Uh, and you can see that does close the portal. However, it does not get rid of anyone who's already come through the portal if you close it. Uh, so this hero will be knocking around here for a little while unless I do end up uh, assassinating them or something like that. Uh, after a certain amount of turns, the portals will disappear as well. Um, so the portals will disappear after a certain amount, but by that point, they will have sent a bunch of armies through. Uh, the corruption will be really high in your areas. They'll probably mess up your public order because of the armies, the corruption, the enemy heroes. So you do really want to be closing down the portals as quickly as possible. All right, so now we're going to discuss how the portals work Ready with legendary lords. Uh, so first of all, you just need to get your legendary lord to go through a portal. Uh, I would recommend that you have uh, pretty much full health when you do this. Uh, sometimes you will have to face some tough battles as soon as you get in there, though. Um, so we're just going to go to... Let's go to Slanesh's realm really quick. Uh, so we will head over to Slanesh's realm. Uh, now, where have I appeared here? So I've actually spawned in, I think, the best place you can spawn in Slanesh's realm. Uh, which is really, really cool. So with Slanesh's Realm, the idea is to get to the bottom. I'm going to make separate videos on how to do these, but just a couple tips about the portals. So I spawned here first time, which is great. I wanted to do that because it's got the shortest way to get down to the bottom. So I'm going to be here for as short a time as possible. A lot of the time, you normally come through this portal first. Uh, so what I'm going to do is show you, even on the same turn, without using any movement, we can go back through the same portal. Uh, so I can go back through the same portal. We'll go to, say, uh, 
the realm of Nurgle really fast. Just skip through this cutscene quickly. And then we can go back to the Dark Prince's realm. And then this time, see if I spawned, I spawned in a different place, see? So if you, you can cheese the game slightly by just doing that over and over and over until you do appear in this portal. Just a little bit of advice for you. Uh, and you can do that with most of the realms, uh, with all of the realms of chaos. With Cinch, it doesn't really work because Cinch's realm is uh, really random. Uh, with Corn, it can work as well. So you can go to Corn if there's like an army or there's a certain side of Corn's realm you're on the wrong side of. You can just go through the realm a few times, uh, go through the portal a few times, and then you'll eventually appear in a different place. So you can just repeat that over and over until you do spawn in uh, the best place for you. Okay, so now we've spoken about how the portals work, how our legendary lords can go through them and kind of cheese the system a little bit, how we close the portals, talked about what comes out of the portals. Uh, the portals have one last feature. Wow, I just said portals a lot. <laughs> the portals have one last feature, which is actually an awesome, awesome feature. Uh, so what it is, is traversing rifts. Now, ideally, if you're playing through the campaign and you want to collect all the souls, you need to go through... Uh, and get a soul first before you do this, I would say. Um, but traversing the rifts basically allows you, you spend 1,000 gold here, and you can go and select any portal on the entire map, and you will teleport directly there. So this can be really useful for if you need to take out certain factions. So we can see here, uh, Exiles of Corn has two uh, souls already. Slanesh has two souls already. I only have one because I took Slanesh's bribe on the first time I went. Um, so what I might want to do is say travel up here to uh, Slanesh's realm or maybe travel here to Korn's realm because I might want to wipe those guys out because if they get four souls before me, it's going to be a problem. So I can use this to literally go anywhere on the map uh, or for example, you can just use it if there's a certain area you want that has really good resources. Uh, or it has like a certain strategic building for you. But yeah, let's just go, for example, up to Slanesh's realm here. So completely across the map, we can click Traverse Rift. It's going to cost 1,000 gold. So here we are, literally in the heart of Slanesh territory. Uh, so you need to make sure, obviously, it's your Legendary Lord's army. So it should be a pretty good army by this point. Um, but we can head straight through that. Uh, can I actually traverse two rifts in one turn? So I can still go through. So what's really nice about these rifts or these portals is they don't take any movement from you. So you can go through as many times as you want. So you could actually explore the map. So there we can, let's go down to this one. Go down to Nordland. Then we can see what it's like in Nordland for a bit. So if you want to spend a bit of gold, you can actually get some good intel. I only just realized you could do this now, to be honest with you. Um, but, like I say, what you may want to do is if you are going to go collect a soul, like I'm going to do in this campaign with Miao Ying, I was going to go through this portal, uh, and then once I've done and completed the soul and I've got it, hopefully I'll have enough time to get down here and traverse the rifts going through this one. Because I believe after you come back from the Realms of Chaos, the portals will automatically close. So I'll see if I can get down here in time. It's really going to depend what one of the Chaos Realms you're going to, because Siege can take ages. Corns can be quite quick, uh, depending on how many armies spawn near you. Uh, Nurgle's is not overly long. Siege's is the longest, really. So if you can get the soul and get to another portal and traverse to another side of the map in uh, just before the portals close, that's probably the best uh, option to go for for this. Um, but yeah, I think we've pretty much discussed everything about how the portals work, how their functionality works, how you can use them in different ways. If anyone does have any questions at all, please do put them in the comments. Uh, if anyone's got any questions or any ideas about how you could use the portals in any other ways, let me know. Uh, but thank you very much for watching the video. Please do uh, sub to the channel, it really does help out. Uh, any likes are appreciated, all that good stuff. I do stream on Twitch as well. If you guys do want to come on over, my Twitch link's in the description. Thank you for watching, and I will catch you in another video. Catch you later, guys.